I'm now joined by Craig Ramsey. He's head of real-time payments at ACI Worldwide. And Adam Nidell, who is principal solution leadership management at ACI Worldwide too. Gentlemen, it's very, very good to see you. Welcome to Cybos. Are you Cybos veterans or are you first timers? My first time. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you. And what about you, Craig? 20 of them so far. <laughs> well, you're a and two virtuals. Right, well, well you're, you're a veteran. We don't need to extend the welcome to you. But look, guys, <laughs> Thank you it's very me. good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Craig, let me start first with you because, look, I quoted that real time, that prime, for, prime time for real time report there 25% of all electronic payments real time by 2026. I mean, look, just clear the air here. What is a real time payment and what is behind that growth? if 26% of us or 25% of us will be embracing it in a few years' time? Well, we'll all be embracing it in a few years' time. Um, the statistic is actually 25% of all electronic payments are likely to be a real-time payment by 2026. And we should put that into some context. A real-time payment, what is it? At a simple level, it's an account-to-account -account transaction, but it's something that we can do 24-7, and it means instantaneous settlement to the beneficiary. So if I send you money, you can use it immediately again. But it's actually on a lot more layers than that. It's not just about that, that simple account transfer. There's also all of the digital overlay services and value added services that bring a whole digital revolution to payments processing. Right, so it's basically speed. So if I speak to you mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and you say, Juliet, I'm going to send you a thousand pounds, and I will give you my account details when we finish speaking, I should get that money within five minutes? Uh, within 12 seconds. Within 12 actually, seconds. Actually, and, and more, often, more often faster. The it analogy is stand at an ATM and you'll be able to get the money out instantly. Right, because there are some companies who said, well, actually, you'll be able to see it happening before your very eyes. That's right, and tracking and tracing of the payment is also a very important thing. You get that instant confirmation that the payment has arrived at the beneficiary. Right, so I really will give you my bank account details and test this. Uh, and <laughs> good luck with that, because I think my sons have already drained it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd like to finish the process. But, Adam, when we talk about this, it, is, it, it really is fantastical. And you tend to find that the conversation veers towards regions. And the region which tends to come up a lot are the Nordics, that they're often seen as some of the pioneers of these payments. But the bottom line is that there are some countries which are doing better on this than others. Why is that? It's, it's twofold. It's focus and brand recognition. The countries where the governments or the governing financial bodies said, hey, focus on this one scheme, then everybody is spending all their attention on how do I connect to that scheme? How can I give value-added services? How can I give products to my customers? So then everyone is like, okay, I want to now use that. And that comes to brand recognition. Now someone can come and say, hey, how can I use this scheme? How can I use that scheme in my business? It's about doing requests to pay, QR codes, and there. Examples are UK, faster payments. India with UPI, probably one of the leaders where everybody was on there it's, and their GDP is uh, exponentially growing. In Brazil, PIX came out. Every bank, every fintech was like, how do I connect? How do I give you my value to the customers? It, the ASEAN region was another call out. They did the connection, the value adds, then they connected their, their continents, their mm. countries there. So now you can do a cross-border instant payment within the region. So it's about focus and, and the customer saying, hey, how can I use this in my business? Yeah, and that's the key thing as well. It's really knowing your demographic because there are some countries where there is a fear of this level of transaction because there are suspicions, for example, around security, giving away data. But some countries, they're able to embrace it because I guess that um, the authorities have actually addressed those concerns. Agreed. And it's also about focus where... I have too many options. I don't know which to use. I don't know what's the value to yeah, me. And you spend more time on the choice. Yes. And then it's like, how does somebody support so many schemes? And that runs into the problem. So mm. it's about focus and brand awareness. But, but Craig, let's take this a bit further. I mean, what are the use cases that you're seeing as the most popular with consumers and corporations? And why? Because, you know, there is a lot of choice, as Adam outlined. Yeah, and the, the first use case that everyone starts with is a person-to-person -person use case. Family and friends, me, me sending you that £1,000, we'll, we'll sort that out yeah, later. Yeah, I'm going to hold that to you. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you will. But, uh, that, that P2P payment is, is always the first use case. But it's very important, and the countries that have really benefited from real-time payments are the ones that have gone beyond that person-to-person -person use case. They've introduced it to corporates. And a small corporate like an SME, so a window cleaner, a plumber, they can remove the necessity to take cash, they can be paid instantly, they've, they've probably got a very 
a, a much more narrow use of liquidity. So having instant access to the money that they've actually spent on supplies or something to, to fix a boiler or something, getting paid instantly is beneficial to them. A larger corporation can benefit from the data content that a real-time payment has. It's based on ISO 20022 standards, and I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of that at Cybos. We have. Um, I would imagine. <laughs> um, so based on that standard, we get to carry much richer data in the payment, invoice data, and that helps the corporation reconcile a payment. And that then goes to B2B use cases. So actually, if, I, if you're a business and I'm a business, I can send you money and you can transact easier with me. But the use case that we see the most benefit from are merchants, when merchants get engaged. Um, they can use uh, request to pay scenarios to actually uh, issue their bills electronically and say, you know, will you pay it, will you not pay it? You might uh, pay some of the bill. It might be a bit of a buy now, pay later scenario. Um, so there's lots and lots of use cases uh, across the world that are examples. And in our report, you can see the examples that have really grown in different mm. countries. And the important thing as well to stress is the inclusivity. Mm. You tracked it from the window cleaner all the way up to the big corporate. Really important because, again, that's one of the Cybos themes. Mm -hmm. But given what is happening, you will never get away from the consumer fear of fraud. How can you protect customers against that regardless of what size they are there will always be bad actors out there who will try to exploit the technology for their own purpose so we can actually tackle that on two levels um, the first level is actually that ISO 20022 standard again use that data content and the richness to do the right analysis at not just the sending bank but also the receiving bank as well make sure that the receiving bank knows who their customer is why are there suddenly a lot of payments coming in and we can track behavior a lot easier with that ISO 20022. But we should never underestimate the benefit of consumer education. You must keep customers aware of what they should expect to see as the normal process. What should normal look like for them with new payment schemes? Because lack of education, fraudsters will target. They'll phone you up, they'll say, I've just seen, you might have just seen something on the news about this new payment scheme. They're very convincing. Guess what? Just give me all your login details and passwords and I can do it. <laughs> it, it sounds crazy, but it does it, it does happen. Your account's emptied about 30 minutes after that conversation or possibly even less because they move quickly. But well, One thing we should really point out on that, though, is fraud has not increased because of real-time payments. Right. It's actually consolidated. Sure. So we see a lot of consolidation into what is the new and easy target. It hasn't increased. OK, that's a good point to make as well. And Adam, look, let's let's broaden things out because the bottom line is that there are countries which are introducing new payment types, so much variety, which begs the question, don't we have enough already? Isn't it going to reach a point where it's, which, where it's a, a circle which eventually it bloats on feeding itself? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's actually not about the new payment types. To me, it's about the digitalization, the digital services, the financial inclusion. I mean, we just talked about how the finances, where you get the originator getting the, the payments in electronically, the receiving people wants to know they get it. I mean, we all have our mobile phone, our devices, our rich UIs. I mean, that's the new norm of today. It's about financial inclusion. The governments, the insurance companies, you know, you get a disaster, your house gets destroyed. You need to get to that money as soon as possible so they can make use of it. Cash and check is getting to be hard to use. It's slow. Uh, and, you know, and again, when you have a disaster, you need to have that there right then and there. It's just the new norm of today. OK, look, gentlemen, we have to leave it because it's been a really fascinating conversation. But sadly, time is the enemy. All right. But you know, fantastic you were here. And also, it's good for your first Cybos as well. And your first appearance on Cybos TV. You're a Cybos conference veteran, but is this your first TV appearance? Uh, I believe it is, yeah. All ah, right. Well, look, you've both done exceptionally well. Enjoy the event and hopefully we'll see you in Toronto next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.